This starts a series of videos in which I'll introduce some of the basic quantities involved in electric circuits to aid students in my introductory circuit modeling class. This is a pilot attempt by an amateur, so don't expect anything too impressive. I'll start by introducing electrical engineering. Electrical engineering deals with the manipulation of electrical and magnetic quantities for the benefit of mankind. Now, doesn't that sound noble? Uh, it's a very broad field dealing with everything from generating and delivering power to homes, businesses, and factories, to generating and transmitting the signals used in wireless communication, satellite communications, and radar. It goes all the way down to manipulating materials at near atomic scales to create computing and communication devices. Regardless of the realm or subdiscipline we're working in, it all starts with a basic quantity of charge. Charge is, according to Merriam-Webster, an amount of electricity. Okay, so uh, what that electricity is, also according to Merriam-Webster, a form of energy that's carried through wires and is used to operate machines, lights, etc. Still not all that descriptive. Another definition is given by the freedictionary.com. And I have to admit, I like this one a little bit better. Not because it's more descriptive, I just like how it sounds. So according to the freedictionary.com, charge is the property of matter that's responsible for electric, electrical phenomena, existing in positive and negative form. From these definitions, we may not be any closer to understanding what charge is, but that's okay. We can leave that to the pure scientists. From an engineering standpoint, knowing that it's there how it be, and how it behaves, I can use it. Here are some basic properties of charge. It comes in two different polarities. This means that some charges we call positive and others we call negative. Charge is measured in a unit called coulombs. A coulomb is a large amount of charge. See, the most commonly referred to particle of charge is the electron. It's a tiny atomic, subatomic particle with negative charges. To get a coulomb of charge, I would need more than 6 billion billion charges, or to express it scientifically, 6.215 times 10 to the 18th electrons. Another property is that charges can act at, on each other at a distance due to invisible forces called electric fields. Like charges repel each other, and opposite charges attract. Now, because charge can act at a distance, I can, for instance, use a collection of positive charges to push a positive charge. Or, I can use a collection of negative charge to pull a positive charge. So let's assume we can collect these charges, because, well, we can. Then I use that collection to move another charge. A fixed positive charge can push a positive charge away. The motion of charge is another fundamental quantity that is called current. Current is measured in coulombs per second, or amperes. Amperes are the SI units for electricity. So a little aside, um, SI refers to the French form of saying the international system of units. So the standard units are, for uh, expressing length, we use the meter. Uh, the kilograms used for expressing mass, so seconds used for expressing time, the ampere is used for expressing electric current. Interestingly, it is the only SI unit that's composed of other units, that is, of the coulomb and the second, since current is a measure of charge per unit time. All the other units are base units. The Kelvin is used to express temperature, the mole is used to express the amount of substance, and the candela is the unit of luminous intensity. So these are the agreed upon units from which we build all our other units. I may come back to these at a later video. Now, as I was saying, electric current is the flow of charge. Since electrical quantities have a polarity or direction associated with them, I need to define current with a direction, kind of like a vector. Well, exactly like a vector. Positive charge, flowing in a positive direction is a positive current. Now, by some strange series of coincidences, Ben Franklin, it turns out that what we call positive charge is largely stationary in solids. 
as positive charge is most commonly found in the nuclei of atoms. So, most commonly, when we're referring to current, we're referring to the movement of the negative charge, or electrons. That's okay, because much like with the case of motion of objects, positive and negative only refer to direction. What that means for us is that a negative charge moving in a negative direction is also a positive current. For our purposes in this class, this series, it really doesn't matter what type of charge is moving. The fact that we have current is the important thing. Now, if we have charge and we have the movement of charge in current, there must be something that makes charge move. The force that causes the motion of charge is the electromotive force, or commonly called voltage. Voltage is a measure of how much electric pushing power there is to move that charge. The more voltage we have, the more charge we can move. Using the illustration I used earlier, if a little fixed positive charge can push a little bit of positive charge away, then a lot of positive charge can push a lot of positive charge away. So where does voltage come from? Well, it comes from charge. This may seem a little bit circular, but we might expect that since I started by saying that charge was responsible for electric phenomena. So it makes sense that it's at the center of everything. Not only is it the thing that is getting pushed around, it's also the thing doing the pushing. So here we have our fundamental quantities of electric phenomena. We have charge, the movement of which we call current, and the thing that makes these move is voltage. Now, how can we have a presentation on electrical engineering that does not include at least one little derivation? So let's see if we can put these quantities together in a meaningful way. We already have that the Coulomb per second is the ampere. If we express this a little more mathematically, we see the change in charge per unit time is equal to current. If we wanted to go even a little further, current is equal to the derivative of charge with respect to time. We also have that the volt is equal to joules per coulomb. Expressing this a little more mathematically, we could write it that voltage is equal to the change in energy over the change in charge. Going to calculus, this says that voltage is the derivative of energy with respect to charge. So if we put these together, the product of voltage times current gives us the derivative of charge with respect to time times the derivative of energy with respect to charge. The charges cancel and we have the derivative of the energy with respect to time, and that's called power. Power measures the amount of energy per unit time. Power is equal to voltage times current. The unit of power is the watt. Now, there'll be many more details as we go forward, but that's enough to get us started. So what we've covered today is that charge is the basic physical property responsible for electric phenomena. That the motion of this charge is called current and is measured in amperes. The quantity that causes this motion is voltage, and it is measured in volts. And just for fun, we threw in a new equation for electric power. Electric power is simply the product of the voltage times the current, and it is measured in watts. So that's all for today. Go out and make it a great one.